Hello, my name is Kiara Byers, and I am researching Clark Central High School in Athens, Georgia. Clark Central High School is located in Athens, Georgia. The school is currently made up of 100% disadvantaged students, 42% um, black, 24% Hispanic, and has a current graduation rate of 86%. In 1970, Clark County schools were desegregated, and Bernie Harris High School, which served black students, and Athens High School, which served white students, were merged to establish Clark Central. Clark Central High School success in improving students' SAT scores earned them the Regional Governor's Cup in 2006 and 2007. The Governor's Office presented the award each year to Georgia schools that achieved the highest gains in average SAT scores. 2010, U.S. News and World Report awarded Clark Central the Silver Medal and ranked the school in the top 3% of schools nationwide and the top, and top 11 in the state of Georgia. Newsweek named Clark Central one of America's best schools and ranked in the 96th percentile in high schools nationwide. In 2012, Clark Central was named an AP Science Technology Electronics and Mathematics Honor School by the Georgia Department of Education. It was ranked in the top 11% of schools nationwide by the Washington Post High School Challenge. In 2013, Clark Central's principal, Hooker, was named Georgia Principal of the Year by the NSSPC. And in 2017, it was redesignated as an NS, NASSP Breakthrough School. The mission of Clark Central High School is to empower our students to become responsible, knowledgeable, and compassionate members of global society. Their vision is Clark Central High School is for all students to graduate as lifelong learners with the knowledge, skills, and character to succeed in a global society. So throughout their school improvement pl plan, you can see evidence of programs and action steps that they're implementing to support their vision and goals. So for one, they're trying to create a student-centered um, educational environment where they prioritize student, student empowerment and offer a curriculum that is rigorous and encourages critical thinking, problem solving, and creativity. They also focus a lot on character development and social and emotional learning and mental health. They use data-driven decision-making models um, to continuously improve student outcomes and to measure progress towards their vision and mission and goals. They also have evidence in their school improvement plan of their plans for professional development to support teachers and staff to encourage them to attain the knowledge and skills necessary to implement the teaching methods to push them further towards their goals. There is a plan for community involvement, college and career readiness, and they also have a plan to monitor and evaluate how well they are doing in progressing towards the mission and the vision. The school improvement plan includes their big goals and success indi indicators. They also have a three-part 90-day action plan. There's a reflection and development tool that m monitors progress towards those 90-day action plans. There's a Title I addendment and a professional development plan. So the first component identifies their big goals. Um, their two big goals are to increase graduation rates from 80 to 85 percent. In addition to including that goal, they have success indicators, which are increased percentage of students who participate in advanced or advanced placement courses by 5 percent, increase the number of ninth graders with five or more credits by the end of their freshman year by 5 percent. They want 75 percent of their support students, which are students that need help with basic reading and writing skills to increase by one grade level placement on their universal screener. They also have an indicator that 50% of the students will score proficient or above 
during the 2022-2023 interim assessments. Their second big goal is to decrease discipline referrals by 15 to 20%. Their success indicated the number of formal referrals that are processed by Infinite, which is their alternative campus. All right, the 90 day action plan is where you see all of the work towards those big goals. So in the 90 day action plan, they identify big rocks, um, which are areas of focus um, for them, the, the big rocks are instructional leadership, planning, and assessment, and then school culture and climate. From there, they drill down and identify priority areas, desired outcomes, and then they also perform a root cause analysis for each big rock to determine how the breakdown is happening. So for instructional leadership, their priority area is approximately 25% of their students lack the necessary credits to be considered on track for graduation. So the desired outcome from addressing that priority is to increase the percentage of students that are on target for graduation with their peer cohort and decrease the number of students failing on one or more courses during the school year. So they identify the root cause of the 25% of students being off track for graduation as achievement being low due to a lack of understanding of credit graduation requirements attending attendance engagement home situations and mental health so for their big rock of planning and assessment the priority area of focus was planning um, they identified that planning does not always follow a backwards design and that data is not often used to inform instruction this results in inconsistent student achievement and engagement, especially for their sub pops, students who do not seem to value the learning process. The desired outcome is that there will be consistency within planning across the building. Um, they want their planning teams to function collaboratively with input from all the respective members. They also want their planning teams to plan lessons based on the needs of their students that will focus on learning as a process the assessment data will be used to inform instruction. So for the root cause analysis for planning, they said that it does not follow the backwards design and data is not used. For their last big rock, school culture and climate, um, they identify the area, a priority area as students not feeling connected to the learning environment and do not always have the skills to navigate conflict. The desired outcome is that they provide service to address the social, emotional, mental health, and well-being of all their students by offering wraparound services, uh, social and emotional learning curriculum, restorative justice practices. Um, so their goal was by spring of 2023, 100% of the advisement teachers would have been using circle the circle process with fidelity, increasing the number of teachers that use circle up in the classroom. They also wanted all staff to receive continual professional development and training on restorative practice and more training on educational equity. They wanted to decrease class out of class time from ISS and OSS as a result of office referrals to help support their big goal of reducing disciplinary referrals. Um, they identified the root cause as a lack of relationships and cultural awareness, lack of connectedness to school and community and their peers and teachers, and then family dysfunction and community disintegration. They also included a reflection and development tool. Um, this tool had reflective questions to help leadership stay aligned to their goals um, they also had them chart out their action steps, um, how well they went, how they implemented them, what didn't work, what would they change, and then they had progress monitoring benchmarks set for that 90-day action plan. There's also a Title I addendment that includes a comprehensive needs assessment. That needs assessment is based on the needs of the entire school and considers information on academic achievement, 
in relation to the challenging state academic standards for students who are failing or at risk of failing to meet state standards. Um, they reviewed student achievement data and revealed that their critical needs area for their comprehensive needs assessment was increasing mastery of standards on end of course exams and improving school culture. So they also include a school-wide reform strategies. For this, they identify that students in the ninth and 12th grade were at risk for credit deficiency, which also supports their big goal of increasing graduation rates. Um, they wanted to remedy this by doing regular check-ins with each student to see how they can help them get back on track. Um, they also implemented common planning teams and co-teaching teams to support to support content-specific instructional coaches. They increased after-school tutoring to provide core, um, provide extra enrichment for core content areas. There will be an intentional focus on math and ELA to support those classrooms with iReady software platforms and targeted remediation. They also include a school-wide plan. This plan is was to implement the 90-day action, action steps planning processes. And they also have a family engagement plan that outlines, outlines how they will engage parents and community members. The last part of the school improvement plan is the plan for professional development. Um, incorporating a professional development plan into the school improvement plan is essential for empowering educators and staff with the knowledge and skills needed to implement the strategies outlined in the improvement plan effectively. Um, there were five key things they did. So the first one was identify their professional um, development needs and create targeted professional developments that would address those needs. The professional development was also aligned to the goals. So based on the school improvement plan and objective, the needs assessment results, and specific professional development goals for each teacher. They created a comprehensive plan that outlines specific training, websites, webinars, coaching, and other learning opportunities offered to teachers and staff, including a timeline for each activity and the expected outcomes. The professional development plan is also differentiated. They did not create a one-size-fits-all plan for each and every teacher. There was different content trainings, ones for people who needed training for classroom management, who needed help with planning. Um, and then lastly, it was specific. So it included the strategy of each training so they could address the different learning styles and modalities for each teacher. Um, the type of training, so whether it was virtual, in person, it was a hybrid, if it was a one day training versus a training series. It also included the audience for each training and the person responsible for signing up and payment for each training. Lastly, here's my references.